Brad. I'm from the Sweetie Center for Environmental Biotechnology at ASU. And I'm here today to talk to you guys a little bit about the relationships between the food we eat, the microbes in our gut, and human health. On this slide, I have these arrows pointing in both directions just to kind of emphasize that these relationships go both ways. So I'd like to introduce you guys to some of the researchers that are uh, at ASU. There's Dr. Rosie, Dr. Dayuk, Ezra, Dr. Marcus. There's also Dr. Bruce Rittman, who's not pictured, and Dr. Adams. All these people are at ASU's Tempe campus doing the research I'm about to talk to you about. So first, I want to start with talking to you guys about obesity. Obesity is reaching epidemic proportions in the United States. Over the past 20 years, rates have gone up in almost all 50 states. Some states, as this graph shows you, by as much as double. So obesity is defined as having a body mass index of 30 or greater. Here in Arizona, uh, we're ranked about 39th in the country, which is pretty good. Unfortunately, that still means about 25% of us are obese. This is unfortunate because obesity is related to chronic health issues like diabetes or heart problems. Um, so there are various treatments for obesity, like uh, invasive gastric surgeries that can literally change the route that food travels as it goes through your digestive tract, or less invasive things like you know, dietary or, or exercise regimens. Um, the next uh, uh, element I want to talk about is autism. So over the last 10 years, rates of autism have gone up about five times. This means about 6.5 out of every 1,000 children in uh, Maricopa County that are eight are going to be diagnosed with autism. Um, so autism is what we call a spectral disorder, and that means that symptoms can range from mild to severe. So people who are autistic have difficulty forming relationships and communicating with other individuals, and the amount of difficulty they have doing that is put on this spectrum. So someone's diagnosed as autism um, by, first, they have a combination of genetic and environmental factors, and they're administered a test. Based on those results, they're uh, assigned, or either given prescription medication or even given a special dietary or, uh, or health regimen. So what does all this have to do with food? Well, in the past five years, the National Institute of Health has started something called the Human Microbiome Project. This project seeks to sequence all of the microbes that are associated with their bodies. This is pretty significant because microbes that are associated with our bodies outnumber our cells by about 10 to 1. So what's a microbe? In this sense, a microbe is a single-celled organism that's associated with our body, like a bacteria or, or bacterium or archaea. And the uh, microbiome is simply the combination of all those microorganisms and how they interact and communicate with each other. So we're interested in looking at the microbiome of the gut. So how do, <laughs> how do we tell? How do we get those samples? Well, you eat the food, you digest it and process it, and then you poop it. We collect your poop. And the microbes that are in there are a good indication of what's going on in your gut. So as you can imagine, di different microbes in the gut are going to communicate and form unique networks. And these different networks are going to process our foods in different ways. So if you can imagine that microbes are like human beings, you can see how different individuals in different networks can form, you know, can lead to completely different results. For example, some are going to like apple pie, some are going to like sauerkraut, some are probably going to like vodka. So <laughs> on my next slide here, I just have an example for you. So the individual on the left is obese. <laughs> the individual on the right is a normal, healthy weight individual. And uh, these two pie graphs are showing that the, the microbes in their gut are different. So the person who's obese is likely to have microbes that are better at processing the foods that we eat into energy that could be absorbed, which becomes fat. So, and also, people who are autistic, people who have more severe autistic symptoms have uh, uh, microbes that lead to gastric issues, like gas buildup, which can cause pain, since these people have difficulty expressing themselves to others that uh, you know, might manifest itself as an autistic outburst. So what does all this lead to? Well, it leads to the possibility of microbial treatment. So we can do probiotics, where we literally put the microbes that we know are good for you into your body, or prebiotics, where the microbes that are good for you are already in your stomach, and we feed them what they need to grow and flourish. There's also the idea of microbial types or enterotypes, which are similar to blood types. And this is, for example, like different populations around the world that have different uh, eating habits might have their own unique microbial types. Um, there's also the possibility of microbial diagnostics. So if we see that certain disease states are strongly associated with different microbes in your gut, we might be able to use those microbes as a biomarker or indicator to diagnose certain diseases. So what does the future hold? Well, we need to do more research to figure out just how these, uh, this interrelatedness works. We need to do more research to be able to imply causality between, for example, how much the food we eat influences the microbes and vice versa, and also in human health. So what can you do to help? Well, there's two things. You can get out your phone, and you can save this number. You can contact Susanna Murphy at the Mayo Clinic. 
you're a healthy individual, you can donate your poop to science. <laughs> and you, you can also go to college and you can do research in this area because we could always use it in the lab. Thank you. Thank you.